Hi, my name is Kiara Smith and I'm going to do my speech on cleft lip and palate. What would you do if you or someone you knew had a child who was born with a cleft lip or palate? Even though cleft lip and palate is fairly common and occurs in one in every 700 births, it's not normally talked about unless it happens to you or someone you know. This topic touches close to my heart because I used to babysit three children who were born with a cleft. Most people will meet someone in their lifetime with a cleft lip or palate. If you know someone personally or happen to meet someone, hopefully after my speech you will be educated to know how it affects their life. During my speech I am going to explain what a cleft is, the four main types of cleft, how it affects communication, who is at risk, what the complications are, how it's diagnosed, the prognosis and treatment options. Then I am going to explain the diagnostic team, referrals and support group. Now that you know what we are going to discuss, let's talk about what a cleft palate is. A cleft is an opening in the lip, the roof of the mouth, or the back of the mouth. A cleft lip may be accompanied by an opening in the upper jaw or upper gum. The bone that may be affected by a cleft is called the maxilla, or the dental ridge of the upper jaw. I got this information from www.cleftline.org. A cleft palate occurs when two sides of the palate do not join together properly, resulting in an opening in the roof of the mouth. A cleft lip or palate can occur on one or both sides of the mouth. Now let's talk about the four main types of cleft, which I obtained this information from the Numerous Foundation of Kids Health Cleft Lip and Palate. The first main type of cleft I'm going to talk about is an incomplete unilateral cleft of the lip. This type of cleft only affects one side of the lip. The other side of the lip is still intact and the palate is still intact. The next type of cleft I'm going to talk about is a unilateral cleft of the lip, alveolus, and palate. The alveolus is a hollow cavity extending through the nose. This type of cleft affects the lip, alveolus, and palate but is located only on one side of the mouth. The next time of type of cleft I'm going to talk about is a bilateral cleft of the lip, alveolus, and palate. Since this is a bilateral cleft, meaning both sides of the, the mouth, this is the most severe type of cleft because it allows air pa to pass through the mouth into the nose. The last type of cleft I'm going to talk about is an isolated median cleft. This type of cleft only affects the plate palate inside of the mouth and your lips and the roof of your mouth are still intact. Do you think that you could talk and function properly with a hole in the lip or your roof of your mouth? This leads me to my next main point. How does a cleft affect child's communication? If you have a cleft lip or palate, you may have speech sound difficulties. You often, a person with a cleft lip or palate may have a, um, a problem called hypernasality. When you have hypernasality, your speech sound nasal and it may sound the opposite of what you sound like when you have a cold. A person with a cleft might also suffer from language delays, voice problems, and eating difficulties. I am sure no one wants a small malformation to happen to them, so let's see what, a, what causes a cleft lip. Who is at risk for a cleft lip or palate? The following information I obtained from the Journal of Craniofacial Surgery by Samuel Boatskowitz. In the early stages of pregnancy, separate parts of the baby's face form and then come together. A cleft happens when the two parts do not form together properly, resulting in a cleft. Though no one knows exactly what causes a cleft, some specialists believe that is part genetic and environmental. Genetics such as things that are inherited and environmental such as vitamin deficiencies. Children with a parent who has a cleft have a 4-6% to chance higher of children who do not have a cleft to receive one. Some ethnicities have higher incidences of clefts such as Asians and Native Americans. United States, clefts occur in, one every, in every 700 births. If you are the one out of the 700 that does contract a cleft, what complications do you think you will have in your life? This leads me to my next main point. There are many complications that come along with a cleft lip or palate. People who have clefts often have dental problems. Dental cavities and misplaced teeth are the most common types of dental problems that occur with clefts. Clefts may also cause problems with your ears. Things such as hearing loss and recurrent ear infections are often associated with clefts. Clefts can cause visible and non-visible deformalities. Often clefts cause deformalities of the lip, the mouth, and the nasal cavities. Clefts may cause many difficulties with speech and feeding. When you have a cleft, often milk will flow through the nasal passage during feeding. Now let's talk about how they know a child has a cleft. A physical examination of the mouth and nose and palate confirms a cleft lip or palate. Medical tests may be done to rule out other possible health conditions. Cleft lip and palate are usually diagnosed at birth, but can sometimes be discovered before birth using an ultrasound. Now that we know how a cleft is detected, let's find out what our prognosis is. 
Although treatment may continue for several years and require several surgeries, most children with a cleft lip or palate can achieve normal parent speech and hearing. However, some people may have continued speech problems. Next, we will talk about treatment options for someone with a cleft. There are many types of treatments for clefts. Children with clefts benefit from a specialized team care. These teams work together with their child's primary care physician to provide the best care possible. The exact age of repair depends on the size and the health of the child and the surgeon's preference. Most surgeons repair clefts when a baby is three to five months old and repair cleft palates when nine, at nine to 18 months of age. Some children require secondary surgery on the cleft palate to improve speech. Many children with cleft require operations such as bone grass, pharyngeal flap, and plastic surgery to improve appearance such as and improve breathing. Now let's explore the diagnostic team and referrals. A person with a cleft may have a big or small diagnostic team based on the severity and complications of the cleft. The following information was in obtained from WebMD cleft lip and palate causes and treatments. The first doctor I want to talk about is an audiologist. An audiologist examines a child's hearing. It tests your child's behavior response and to specific speech sounds and evaluates the middle ear functions to make treatment recommendations. The second person I want that may help with your child is a clinical social worker. A social worker obtains information about your family in order to provide with the resources and education and information and materials such as counseling and support. Another person that may be beneficial to a person with a cleft is an occupational therapist. An occupational therapist may observe your child's eating habits as well as develop a feeding plan and may include special techniques, positioning, and feeding equipment. They will also assess your child's overall development, including movement, play, and hand skills. The next doctor I'm going to tell you about is a pediatrician or a primary care physician. They can help coordinate special testing and intervention that may be recommend recommended. The next person I'm going to talk about is very important to someone with a cleft. A pediatric dentist is a trained care for the child's dental needs of very young child or special needs children. The next doctor that will most likely deal with a child with a cleft is a pediatric plastic surgeon. A pediatric plastic surgeon has special expertise in surgical repair of patients with a cleft lip or palate. The last person I'm going to tell you about is called a speech language patho pathologist, a SPL. SPL will evaluate your child's ability to understand and use language and his or her speech resonance or oral or nasal cavity tone quality. A SPL may recommend speech therapy after your child has been evaluated. It is hard to go through the process of having or of fixing a cleft, so there are support groups there to help the process. There are many support groups for people born with clefts. They vary from place to place. The support groups that I found that seem to be the most useful and are located close to our area are the Shrine Hospital for Children located in Chicago, Illinois, and Daily Strength Support Group, which is an online support group that anybody can access anywhere in the world. Now that you know everything there is to know about someone who has a cleft lip or palate, Remember, even though cleft and lip and palate is fairly common, and many people don't talk about it until it happens to their children or someone they know. Now that you know what a cleft palate is, what main types of clefts, how it affects communication, who is at risk, what the complications are, how it is diagnosed, the prognosis and treatment options, and you know the diagnostic team referrals and support groups. If you know or come into contact with someone who has a cleft and you know what they are going through and what their health is like. I hope now that you have heard my speech that you will be considerate of others with malformations and be able to give knowledge on cleft lip and those who could use it. As I have already encountered some children in my life who has had cleft, you are most likely to find someone who has or had a cleft lip in your lifetime as well. Always remember, everyone is different, no one is perfect, and everyone has different battles they have to fight during their lifetime.